Put away your telescope, because today you're going to see the International Space Station up close and personal. We're going to take a Russian Soyuz rocket up to the modular space station and then take a look inside. You'll get to see the Russian orbital segment, US orbital segment, Columbus Science Laboratory, and the Japanese experiment module. We'll even explore every node and module from Zarya to Tranquility. Are you ready for a tour of the $150 billion International Space Station? Getting to the ISS isn't cheap. Your seat aboard the Soyuz spacecraft costs $86 million. As the spacecraft detaches from the rocket, take a look at the exterior of the ISS. You'll notice massive solar array wings that are worth more than $300 million total. They harness solar power and provide electricity for the ISS. If you look toward the center of the space station, you'll see HRS radiators. They're essentially air conditioners that push excess heat away from the space station. There's also photovoltaic radiators along the truss system of the ISS, which which are used to release excess heat from the solar arrays. See that robot moving along the truss system? That's the mobile servicing system. This Canadian-made robotic system repairs the ISS and consists of four distinct parts. There's Canada Arm 2, the Dexter Telemanipulator robot, the mobile base system, and the mobile transporter. Dexter costs 200 million Canadian dollars to build, and it's so advanced it can even repair itself. Canada Arm 2, which cost 1.4 billion Canadian to build, can be used to help spacecraft dock to the ISS. But since we're going to dock on the Russian side, we won't need its help today. Now that Soyuz is docked to the PERS module, let's open the hatch and head inside. You'll notice that PERS is incredibly cramped. There is an EVA hatch over there that's used for spacewalks, and just below you'll see a storage compartment where you can stow your spacesuit. Let's get out of these hefty Russian cosmonaut suits and float up into the $320 million Vesda module. There's enough living space for two cosmonauts in here, and six crew members can fit inside at a time. Over there, you'll see a treadmill equipped with a vibration isolation stabilization system. If you strap yourself in and go for a jog, your movement won't disrupt delicate experiments in the module. Zvezda is equipped with a life support system, and there's also a space toilet in this module. So go now if you have to go. Let's float upward into the Poisk module. You'll notice that it's pretty much identical to PERS except that the cosmonaut suit storage space is above you instead of below. If you rotate your orientation, then nothing will be different. Don't worry, you won't feel like you're upside down. Uh, there is no upside down in space because the ISS is a microgravity environment. Let's head back down through Zvezda and into the $220 million Zarya model. This module was used to power ISS during initial assembly, but now it's used for storage. Zarya has a communications panel as well as a caution and warning systems panel. If you float down, you'll enter the RASVET module. This module is primarily used for storage, but you'll notice a docking port below you. Looks like a Progress spacecraft is docking. We should head out so they can unpack the payload. Let's head through the pressurized mating adapter and into the US orbital segment. You're now inside the $400 million Unity module. This is where NASA astronauts meet to eat meals together. Essential space station resources such as environmental control and life support systems are routed through Unity. If you look to your right, you'll see an airlock. Should we take a quick spacewalk? Hop into a NASA spacesuit and let's head out. On the side of the airlock, you'll see an external stowage platform. It looks like it's covered with orbital replacement units. Those astronauts are hard at work doing repairs. Let's head inside and onto the $550 million Tranquility module. This module is used for exercise, storage, and robotics work. Tranquility also houses life support systems and control systems. If you head right, you'll enter the Leonardo module. Astronauts use this module as a personal hygiene area. Let's head over to the Bigelow Expandable Activity module. You'll notice that the walls of this module are made from fabric. It's essentially a test module for expandable habitat technology. We'll float down into Coppola. This module provides the best views of Earth from the ISS. Beautiful, isn't it? Next up is the $4 billion Destiny module. This is a laboratory module where astronauts conduct research. You'll notice scientific equipment like a Melfi freezer. Over there, you'll see the AgCam, which takes pictures of vegetation on Earth, and that's the vegetable production system where astronauts can grow cabbage and lettuce. Let's head forward to the $100 million Harmony module. On top of this module, you'll see a pressurized mating adapter, and there's one on the front, too. These adapters are used for docking spacecraft like the SpaceX Crew Dragon. Let's head on to the $2 billion Columbus Orbital Facility. This is the European Space Agency's research lab. Columbus houses the Fluid Space Lab, where astronauts test fluid physics in microgravity. Those are European physiology modules that are used to test the effects of spaceflight on the human body, and that's the BioLab, which examines the effects of microgravity on planets, invertebrates, microorganisms, and animal cells. Next to those experiments, you'll notice the European drawer rack, which 
which transfers data, streaming video, and images back to Earth. Let's head to the $3 billion Kibo module and take a look at the experiments the Japanese astronauts are working on. As we enter the pressurized module of Kibo, take a look at the walls. You'll notice five experiment racks. Astronauts perform experiments related to fluid physics and solution crystallization in this module. If you float up, you'll enter the logistics module of Kibo. This area provides storage space for experiment payloads and samples. Look out the window, you'll see the gem exposed facility. This is where astronauts perform external experiments such as examining the composition of cosmic rays. It looks like our ride is here. Let's head back into the U.S. orbital segment and hop on the SpaceX Crew Dragon. Did you know that NASA pays SpaceX $90 million per seat to send astronauts to and from the ISS? Yes, the return trip to Earth is even more expensive. Be prepared for a bumpy ride. Spacecraft re-entry is tricky business. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching.